Welcome back, everyone. Our next guest is a true testament to how just one person can truly make a difference in the lives of animals. And he's doing it with the one thing most people drink on a daily basis coffee. Joining us now are pet rescue expert Larissa and the owner of Grounds and Hounds Coffee Company, Jordan Karcher. Welcome, Jordan. So, Larissa, I know for a fact, because I see you every single day, that the first thing you do every morning, you wake up in the morning, you make yourself a cup of coffee, and you play with your doggies. So Jordan's <laughs> story really resonated with you. And you're wrong with one thing. What's that? The coffee's already made by the time oh, I get it. Because <laughs> you have the automatic. At night, <laughs> every night, because I have to have, a, I mean, I'm a zombie. I wake up, have my coffee, and then I let the dogs out. So coffee to me is everything. And then I get back in bed with them for a few minutes and do some oh, so And drink my coffee, because then my brain turns on a little bit. And I actually have a shirt that I wore earlier because it made me laugh. I had to do it for today. That says, I just want to save dogs, drink coffee, and take naps. Not in that order, order but that's what it yeah. um, And so when I heard about Jordan and his company, I mean, what better combination? Right. So we had to bring him on and talk about this. Yeah. Thank you for being here, Jordan. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for having me, and thank you for everything you guys do for the animal rescue world. It's amazing yeah. to see the platform be used uh, for so much good. Thank you for saying oh, that. Larissa you. leads thank the you. way, I'd oh, like to say. And your whole life changed one fateful day in Santa Monica when yeah. you met the love of your life. Please tell I us did. about it's that. It's a lot of fate and a little bit of luck. Uh, I was walking to breakfast. I was 24 years old, left my house with no real plans to uh, change my life drastically, but... I looked off to the side of the road and I saw a little Dalmatian pop-up adoption. About eight or nine Dalmatians playing and you know, being a normal adult, I decided I have to, to go spend some time with puppies. <laughs> and I, I look over and there's a, a brown and white malnourished Dalmatian who kind of stands out from the group. And I just wanted to walk up and just see the dogs grab some breakfast. She comes over, crawls in my lap, tucked her nose in my jacket, and the next thing, it's, uh, it's all history for us. I, I left oh. PetSmart about the, oh, six hours later with five times more pet supplies than any human being needs for a single dog and and I uh, never did really get breakfast so it was all in all a pretty successful change of life but it sounds like being a parent yeah. that's exactly yeah. what it's like to be a parent if it happened overnight unexpectedly yes absolutely Aww. it was it was perfect though but it's been uh, it's been nothing but great things since then and it's been um, it's more rewarding for me that's... than uh, than I could ever possibly explain so You're amazing. How, did, how did Molly open up your eyes to the world of rescue that picture so cute. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we just left vacation in uh, Vermont, so that was, that was awesome. So when I first adopted Molly, I was familiar with the statistics. I was familiar with the 2.1 million dogs euthanized, um, all of the shelter constraints. But when you really have that tangible touch point to bring it to life uh, and you see the wagging tail every morning, uh, she just opened up my eyes. It's not something that you can be passive. You have to find uh, a real solution and address the problems. And Molly just serves as that reminder for me every day. Um, so I started dedicating some of my time working with animal rescues, uh, just trying to find ways to help any way possible. Uh, but then when I started looking at it from more of a, a business and problem-solving mm -hmm. standpoint, I said there are amazing people that dedicate time and effort um, and emotions to this every day. What can I do that could actually move the needle? Uh, in my time, of course, I'd love to volunteer, but maybe there's something bigger. Uh, and that's where Molly just kind of opened up that door for me. And, you know, the, everything else since then has been kind of an incredible journey. Yeah, she really is the reason you launched Grounds and Hounds Coffee. Absolutely. She's the Great. face of the company. She's the inspiration. She served as our reminder. Um, she served as the, the packaging Aww. kind of design elements. It's brown and white packaging to, to represent her brown and white spots. So she's uh, my best friend, my co-founder, and I mean, we do everything together. How does Grounds and Hounds work? Yes, like yeah. and So what we do is we, we first offer uh, focused on making an amazing cup of coffee. So we want the pet parent to wake up in the morning and have an excuse to spend 15 more minutes with their best friend. It's not run out and stand in line and then wish you could spend a few more minutes with your dog. Stay home, brew a great cup of coffee, uh, and really enjoy that time together. The, the next piece is with so many people drinking coffee and so many people loving dogs, we thought if we could get enough or even just a fraction to drink this coffee, maybe we could provide some funding back. So 20% of our profits go back to rescue organizations. Oh, that's um, so wonderful. But yeah. beyond just donating money to a single group, what we want to do is make it impact your community. So you purchase the coffee in California. We look at initiatives in that region that we can actually deploy the funds to oh. to make an impact where you're drinking the coffee every day. That is so great. Thank that you. is so So you're, you're literally giving back to yeah. your community. That's so wonderful. It's why we exist. It's really at the core of our of our existence. And there are plenty of coffee companies out there, but we're really more of a, a mission company. We want you to start your day off doing something amazing, 
uh, we would want you to start it with us. Well, I, it, it definitely does start with you, and it doesn't end right. with you, because you're so passionate about having get make sure that all dogs are adopted that you even motivated your own parent did, to I adopt did. a senior dog. I, I mean, I'm using motivation, but it was more like you will do this. <laughs> that, I think, it, I mean, to be honest, I really feel it's genetic. Uh, we grew up, it's a dog-loving household. It didn't take too much encouragement, but we were doing a pop-up cafe in uh, Manhattan uh, two years ago, and my parents were there spending some time with us, and there was a, um, a senior dog named Jojo who, who had a really, really rough life. And Aww. he was uh, caged in North Carolina for yeah. about eight years, lived in a warehouse, um, you know, just nothing really pleasant until he ended up into a, an animal rescue organization. And my parents saw that. Um, fortunately, they, they had the means to try to give him a great life, and he came into our family really unexpectedly, um, but he, he really just, you know, made up for those first eight years. He has been Aww. featured in magazines for having all kinds of toys. and oh, that's and, so and, uh, and even mom, your friends. Yes, yes. So, and unfortunately, JoJo passed from um, cancer uh, just about two weeks ago. So oh, no. so the, the real thing we like to think about, it, it's, it's a senior dog. Um, they've already had enough, uh, enough of a tough time, and we just want to provide the best possible yeah. experience for every dog. But there, there's really an emphasis on getting out there and saving these dogs as soon as possible. You know, whether it's one year old or 12 years old, um, we look at it like it's too long to be in a shelter, and, and their lives are yeah, so short. It's so we true. want to, yeah, we really want to just make sure they have that chance for a happy life or as much as possible. And if I can say one thing that really struck me when we were talking throughout this process of getting you out here, um, you talked about your final goal mm -hmm. being to stop the dogs from being there in the first mm -hmm. place. And I think you said a quote to me, which yeah. just took me back, which was, you can get the water out of the sinking ship, but you've got to finally, at some point, figure out how to plug the hole in the first place. Right. And that is what I know you're working on doing, and I can only thank you for that, and I know a lot of other people. So, it's great work. Honestly, yeah. thank you yeah. both. Thank you so much for all you do, Jordan. Really, thank you. We hope everyone enjoys waking up with our coffee. That's all we can really ask for. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for having You're me. You're really great. You two are great, man. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> for more information on Grounds and Hounds Coffee and to see how you can help rescues and shelters in your own city, go to groundsandhoundscoffee.com and stick around. Because up next, we are heading into the kitchen to eat again with Chef Gabby Dalkin. Hi, Chef. If you're scared of cooking a whole roasted fish, I'm going to solve all your problems with this roasted branzino and fennel slaw.